Let's count down my top five favorite games that I currently own. In Lords of Waterdeep, you take on the role of one of the masked Lords of Waterdeep, secret rulers of the city. Through your agents, you recruit adventurers to go on quests on your behalf, earning rewards and increasing your influence over the city. Expand the city by purchasing new buildings that open up new actions on the board and hinder or help the other Lords by playing intrigue cards to enact your carefully laid plans. During the course of play, you may gain points or resources through completing quests, constructing buildings, playing intrigue cards or having other players utilize the buildings you have constructed. At the end of 8 rounds of play, the player who has accrued the most victory points wins the game. This game is currently ranked 44 on BoardGameGeek.com, designed by Peter Lee and Rodney Thompson, published by Wizards of the Coast. This game plays 2 to 5 with 60 to 120 minutes playing time, depending on the number of players. So I'm just going to preface this uh, this countdown with saying this is, was a very difficult task for me. I've got uh, probably about 30 games in there, and to kind of narrow it down to my top five that I really love at this point in time, a really difficult task. But in saying that, my number fifth place goes to Lords of Waterdeep. Uh, what I love most about this game is its simplicity, uh, but at the same time, plenty of strategy involved as well. You know, this game is quick to teach and easy to learn. I last year was playing with my eight year old nephew and he was annihilating us every time we'd play. Like he was phenomenal. This is definitely one of my favorite worker placement games that I own. Uh, the way the game is designed makes you really think about the best way that you can possibly uh, perform your turn to maximize the resources that you can kind of generate for each turn. Enlisting those agents to kind of send out on quests and earn your victory points throughout the, uh, throughout the game. It's, it's, it's quite fun, a lot of fun. So I highly recommend uh, my fifth uh, favorite game that I currently own, Lords of Waterdeep. In the game of Diplomacy, players represent one of the seven great powers of Europe. Great Britain, France, Germany, Italy, Russia, Turkey or Austria-Hungary in the years prior to World War I. Players instruct each of their units by writing a set of orders. The outcome of each turn is determined by the rules of the game. The number of supply centers a player controls determines the total number of armies and fleets a player may have on the board, and as players gain and lose control of different centers, they may build or must remove units accordingly. There are no dice rolls or other elements of chance. With this incredibly simplistic movement mechanics fused to a significant negotiation element, this system is highly respected by many gamers, and I am one of them. Currently, this game is ranked 470 on BoardGameGeek.com, designed by Alan B. Calamon, published by Asmodee and Avalon Hill. This game plays 2 to 7 with a 360 minutes playing time. Number 4 goes to an oldie, but a goodie. Diplomacy. This game has been around since the 60s. So the job with Diplomacy is it's difficult for me to find seven players that want to commit eight hours to finishing this game. I've only really brought this game to the table maybe twice and both times we've only played maybe uh, six rounds and really only scratched the surface of this game. It is uh, very high strategy, uh, no chance involved, uh, a lot of discussion, a lot of persuasion, a lot of backstabbing going on, but phenomenal, phenomenal game. I typically play this game online at playdiplomacy.com. Uh, it's, it's really the only way I can uh, you know, get my diplomacy fix, if you like. Otherwise, yeah, again, a difficult game to get to the table, but uh, definitely a classic and is uh, highly rated in my books. I just wish I could play it a little bit more often. In Archipelago, players are Renaissance European powers competing in their exploration of a Pacific or Caribbean archipelago. They will explore territories, harvest resources, use those resources in markets both internal for their use and that of the natives and foreign to sell it to Europe. They will build markets, harbors, cities and temples and negotiate among themselves and maybe betray each other. All this to complete their secret objective. They will also need to guess the secret objective of the other players to be able to benefit from them. But players also need to be careful of the natives. If they make them too unhappy, or if too many of them are unoccupied, they could revolt and declare independence. Then everyone will lose. 
Currently, this game is ranked 254 on BoardGameGeek.com, designed by Christoph Bollinger, published by Asmodee. This game plays 2 to 5, with a 30 to 240 minute playing time, depending on the number of players. Number three is a relatively new game that I own. It's uh, Archipelago. Uh, this is a tile laying game, and I love so many aspects of this game. Uh, the fact that you know you have that real uh, sense of adventure and exploration as you're kind of revealing tiles as you progress throughout the uh, the Caribbean, uh, kind of exploring the archipelago that you're, you've you've uh, come across. I love the theme. I love the artwork. The components in this game are phenomenal. Uh, I've played a couple of games of this now, and every time has been a, a, a great experience. Definitely a lot going on with this game. Uh, you know, you're trying to not only achieve the global objective, but you also have your own secret objective. You're trying to also maintain uh, the natives and make sure they don't become unoccupied, unoccupied or revolt as well. So a lot going on. But overall, fantastic, fantastic game. If you haven't checked this one out, highly recommend it. My number three game, Archipelago. In the land of Terra Mystica dwell 14 different peoples in its seven landscapes, and each group is bound to its own home environment. So to develop and grow, they must terraform neighboring landscapes into their home environments in competition with the other groups. Terra Mystica is a game with very little luck and rewards strategic planning. Each player governs one of the 14 groups. With subtlety and craft, the player must attempt to rule as great of an area as possible and to develop that group's skills. There are also four religious cults in which you can progress. To do all that, each group has special skills and abilities. Proximity to other groups is a double-edged sword in Terra Mystica. Being close to other groups gives you extra power, but it also means that expanding is ev the ever more difficult. This game is currently ranked 6 on BoardGameGeek.com, designed by Jens Drogmuller and Helluk Ostertag, published by Fjordland Spiel, this game plays 2 to 5 with 60 to 150 minutes playing time. My number 2 position goes to Terra Mystica. Uh, between this and my number 1 game, it was very difficult for me to choose, but unfortunately Terra Mystica at this point in time has bumped down to the second place position. I've owned this game for a couple of years now, I've played it uh, probably 6 or 7 times. Love this game. Again, a lot of strategy involved, no chance whatsoever. I love the theme, I love the components, I love the uh, the replayability due to the the 14 different type of uh, species or races that are involved in this game. This game is currently the highest ranked game on BoardGameGeek.com that I currently own and I can definitely see why. You know, this is a phenomenal game, highly recommended. Again, if you haven't checked it out, please do so. You're in for a treat. Terra Mystica, my number two position. In Kemet, players each deploy the troops of an Egyptian tribe and use the mystical powers of the gods of ancient Egypt, along with their powerful armies, to score points in glorious battles or through invasion of rich territories. As the game progresses, they can use prayer points to acquire power tiles. Some of these enroll magical creatures and have them join their troops. In addition to intimidating enemies, these creatures provide special powers. A game is typically played to 8 or 10 victory points, which may be accrued through winning attacks, controlling temples, controlling fully developed pyramids, sacrificing to the gods, and wielding particularly magical powers. My number one position goes to Kemet. So this is a fairly new game uh, that was added to my collection. I actually got it for Christmas uh, last year, and I love this game. As you can imagine, it is my number one game in my current collection. And I bring it down to the theme, to the components, they're phenomenal to play with. The gameplay is, is, is just outstanding. Although you're moving your armies around the board, unlike Risk where a lot of players tend to take a, a more defensive approach, this game really kind of forces you to go out and, and explore and, and attack your opponents as well, which I, which I absolutely love. There's always a lot going on in this game. Uh, you always tend to be very engaged as to what not only yourself, but the other players are doing as well to kind of get an idea of, of what their, their next plan of attack is. The power tiles in this game add a, a great element of strategy that really changes up every time you, you play it. I think every game that I've played, I, I've tried to change up or tweak my strategy just a little bit differently to kind of try out different combos with the power tiles and the cards as well to kind of you know, try something different, which is which is a lot of fun. So, again, 
Highly recommend Kemet. If you haven't tried it, check it out. You'll love it, I promise. So there it is, my top five favorite games that I currently own. I would highly recommend any of the games that I presented today and I'll make sure that I actually create some instructional videos and, and uh, you know, discuss some strategy ideas on how to win these games as well in the next uh, couple of weeks, just so you guys can get an idea of how the games are played, what's involved, and whether or not the games are actually a good fit for you and your group. So if you have any feedback, please leave a comment below and please don't forget to su subscribe and uh, thanks for joining me and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.